يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما To proceed my dear respected brothers and sisters Our master a noble companion Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu was on a journey with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and found himself with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, inform me about an action by which I will be admitted into paradise and which will keep me far from the fire. The Messenger said, You have asked me about something great, but it is easy for whomever Allah makes it easy. Worship Allah. And do not associate any partners with him. Establish the salah, give the zakah, fast the month of Ramadan, perform hajj to the house. He then said, shall I not guide you to the doors of good? Fasting is a shield. And charity extinguishes sins like water extinguishes fire. And a man's prayer in the depths of the night. He then said, he then recited Allah's words. تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ حَتَّى بَلَغَ يَعْمَلُونَ Their sides forsake their beds to call upon their lords until he reached Allah's words what they used to do. Then he said, Shall I not inform you about the head of the entire matter and its pillar and its peak? He said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, The head of the matter is Islam. Its peak is the Salah. And its peak is Jihad. Its pillar is Salah. And its peak is Jihad. Then he said, shall I not inform you about what governs all of that? What governs, what controls all of the things that he had previously mentioned? He said, of course, O Messenger of Allah. Then the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, grabbed his tongue and he said, Amsik alayka hadha. Restrain this. The Mu'adh said, O Messenger of Allah, will we be taken to account for what we say? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May your mother grieve you, grieve your loss, O Mu'adh. Are the people tossed into the fire upon their faces except because of what their tongues have harvested? Yes, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the significance of the tongue and the power of the word is the topic of the day. We tend to think that major sins are only drinking alcohol, or fornication or adultery, murder, abuse, consuming usury. But we forget about the major sins that are committed almost on a daily basis, not as a result of the actions of the limbs, but as a result of the products of the tongue. Despite its size, it's the most powerful organ, the most offensive organ, and the most prolific organ in reaping sins. Four out of the seven major sins that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned are a result of the tongue. Ashirku Billah, ascribing a partner to Allah is a result of the tongue. to be undutiful to the parents, to merely say the minimum uquq is to say uff, to express disapproval verbally is a product of the tongue and a major sin. Shahadatul Zur to offer false testimony, a product of the tongue, and al qadh slandering the chaste believers, is a product too of the tongue. And other sins as we know, backbiting and gossip and lying and profanities and obscenities and giving people offensive nicknames, all the product of our tongues. Nothing casts people into the hellfire more than the tongue and the genitals, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when he was asked what casts people most into the hellfire, he said, al famu al farj the mouth and the genitals. Nothing is more destructive and dangerous to mankind when let loose, when unrestricted, 
when ungoverned, more than the tongue and the privates. With good words and with chastity, nations rise, and with vicious tongues and with immorality, nations perish. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has guaranteed paradise for the one who can guarantee the preservation of these two organs, where he says, من يتكفل لي ما بين لحييه وما بين رجليه أتكفل له بالجنة He who can guarantee for me what is between his cheeks, his tongue, and what is between his thighs, I will guarantee for him paradise. My dear respected brothers and sisters, with one statement, we enter Islam with the kalima. And with another statement, we leave Islam. With one word, we marry. Zawajtuka and qabilt. And with one word, we divorce. With one word, we buy. And with another, we sell. With one word, we forge friendships. And with another, we destroy relationships. With a word, we make allies. And with another word, we declare war. With good words, we build good reputations. And with bad words, we can assassinate people's characters through defamation and slander. With words, we endear and captivate people's hearts. And with words, we repulse them and turn them away. Many a time, the wounds that are left due to words last longer than physical wounds. How many painful strikes and blows have we incurred that we have forgotten about? The pain has disappeared. And how many scathing words have cut deeper than knives and have burnt worse than fire? What we utter, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is recorded without deficiency. He, mankind, man, does not utter a word, but there is with him an observer ready, the angels on the right and the left recording every word. Our mobile phones can pick up the words that we're saying. The devices in our homes now that listen to us all the time. It is not difficult that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his angels to record the words that we utter. What we utter, we are accountable for and there is no escape. يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ On the day when their tongues and their hands and their feet testify against them as to what they used to do. The tongue will testify on the day of judgment. What it said, every word that it said, it will testify for the one who denies, for the one who denies the account of the angels. Every word we speak, seriously or in jest, consciously or heedlessly, will be weighed for us or, ag for us or against us. It may be a righteous word that we speak instinctively without thought that may raise us. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ رِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَرْفَعُهُ اللَّهُ بِهَا دَرَجَاتٍ The slave may utter a word that pleases Allah, that he pays no attention to, that will raise him in station. Yes, and maybe words that we forgot that we said, we paid no heed to and thought were insignificant and unimportant that may plunge us into the hellfire and we seek refuge in Allah from the hellfire because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continues and says وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمِ And the slave may utter a word that is displeasing to Allah he pays no attention to it it casts him into the hellfire how is it that some people may unconsciously utter words, instinctively? Words that will either please Allah or displease Allah, earning them his pleasure or his wrath, if not for the fact that they had accustomed their tongues to such utterances. The one whose tongue is moist with the remembrance of Allah, and he speaks only pleasant speech, utters, eventually utters Allah's names habitually, as a reflex, saying kind words and supportive words without a conscious process in doing so. And the one whose tongue is regularly engaged in gossip, backbiting, profanities, incendiary language, 
will eventually find themselves habitually foul in speech, uttering obscenities and slanderous accusations without thought or care for the consequences of such words. So when a person they don't like is mentioned, they'll immediately curse them or make a slanderous accusation against them and cast themselves into the hellfire because their tongues are used to only speaking foul words. My dear brothers and sisters, our words reflect our inner state. The old adage says, Kullu ina'in bima fihi Every vessel pours that which is within it. Every jug pours whatever is inside it. Abu Dhar radiallahu an, the noble companion insulted our master Bilal radiallahu an with a racist remark when he objected to Bilal's opinion and he said, even you object to me, you son of a black woman. Bilal radiallahu an went to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to complain and we know the story. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa did not make an excuse for Abu Dhar. And Abu Dhar, to his credit, did not absolve himself of responsibility. He took responsibility for what he said. And here the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him that his words reflected what is within him. You are a man with ignorance. You have ignorance. He did not hear this and huff and puff and leave. He expelled that ignorance from his heart. He lowered and humbled himself to the one whom he considered inferior to him before. And Bilal radiallahu anhu then forgave him. Today though, People will say rude words. They'll use crass and crude language, make offensive jokes, defame and mock others. Then when censured and criticized, they claim they didn't mean it, or it was an off color joke and remark. We see this all the time with celebrities and politicians and public figures. They'll claim that what they said was taken out of context, or what they said doesn't accurately represent, what, uh, doesn't accurately represent their character and what they stand for. They'll, take the moral high, they'll claim the moral high ground there when they defend themselves. When in, reality, when in reality, our words are the first line of evidence and the most accurate reflection of our characters. So to a great extent, people do say what they mean and people do mean what they say. In addition, we speak in general, dear brothers and sisters, about what most concerns us and what most occupies our hearts. Those who are concerned with politics, for example, will almost always talk about politics. Those who are concerned with movies will almost always talk about movies and films and TV. Those infatuated with a woman will talk about that woman all the time. Those whose concerns are academic in nature, they will talk about academia. Those whose concerns are football and cricket, they'll almost always just talk about football and cricket. And those whose concerns are loftier, those whose concerns are Allah, his messenger, his religion, the hereafter, paradise, hellfire, the ummah, the nation, their speech will be occupied with such lofty topics all the time and they will never talk about mundane issues. Simply put, we speak about what we love, my dear respected brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the exalted in might and his blessed messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given us guidance on what to speak of and what not to speak of. First, we see that pleasant speech is not merely a virtue. It's not a fadila. It's not a virtue only, nor is it voluntary or optional. Rather, good speech is an obligation, a faridah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He commanded us to only speak good and listed this command amongst other commands such as believing in him and paying zakah and establishing prayer. He commanded us as well as the nations before us where he said subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ And recall, when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, do not worship except Allah. And to the parents do good, and to the relatives, and to the orphans, and the needy, 
and speak good to people. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا and establish prayer and give zakah, speaking good between ibadah and aqeedah. Therefore, belief, faith, iman in Allah and the final day are conditional upon what the tongue utters. It is confirmed in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hadith where he says, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُرْ He who believes in Allah on the final day, let him speak good or remain silent. In addition, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defined the Muslim. He said, الْمُسْلِمُ مَنْ سَلِمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ يَدِهِ وَلِسَانِهِ The Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the Muslims are safe. Not only is uttering ill words haram, prohibited, my dear brothers and sisters, but it is, but two, it is haram to sit with the people who utter foul words. Allah has described the believers as those who do not engage in foul speech and they distance themselves from those who speak foul words. He says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Certainly the believers have succeeded. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who are during their prayer humbly submissive. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ And those who turn away from ill speech. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the subject of the tongue and the words it utters is indeed a serious one. It is a serious one and we must think about the implications of the words that we use and their ramifications. In this world and in the next, the heedless are those who speak without need, without thought, and without regard for the consequences of their words. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst the heedful of those who restrain their tongues, who only utter pleasant words, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and secure us from the savage tongues of his enemies. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على من بعث بالرحمة والهدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم على آله وصحبه ومن اقتفى أثره Yesterday, the 11th of July, was the 24th anniversary of the massacre which took place in Srebrenica, Bosnia. Many here in the UK witnessed the genocide live on TV in 1995. This genocide that took place in the heart of Europe, only two hours flight from where we are here in London, was manifest ethnic cleansing and clear evidence of what hatred leads to. The most gruesome crimes imaginable were perpetrated against native citizens to their own country. Over, over 8,000 men and boys were brutally massacred by Serb forces in Srebrenica. Many other massacres took place all over Bosnia. Babies were put through mincers. Women raped. Murdered, the deceased, the murdered, cut into pieces and distributed into different locations, across different locations to avoid discovery. Mosques were destroyed despite no church being damaged by the Bosnians. In fact, churches were repaired by the Bosnians. The international community was slow in their response to this genocide. A genocide that will remain a shameful chapter in the history of this continent. The dead, of course, share the same reward as those mentioned by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When his noble companion, Khabbab ibn al-Arat, came to him complaining about the torture he had, that had been inflicted upon him by Quraysh, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, indeed, those before you were sawn in half and had their flesh torn from their bones so that they may leave the religion and it did not deter them. So they too, insha'Allah, will share that same reward. There is much, of course, that we can learn from the genocide and know what we should do to prevent the repetition of such a crime, such an attempt of mass extermination. In connection with today's khutbah, with today's subject, 
ill feelings, grudges, hatred, and animosity all start in the heart. But they are soon articulated into words. These words can trigger a chain of events that lead to such crimes being perpetrated on a state level, on a national level. People in positions of power and influence must realize that their words have the deepest impact and the greatest ramifications. There's no such thing as freedom of speech when that speech is to incite hatred, fear, bigotry, or worse, murder. When human beings are likened to letterboxes that dehumanizes them, when they're likened to bank robbers that vilifies and criminalizes them, when they're likened to cockroaches, that's a mandate that implies a mandate to exterminate them legally. The door to all evil is the word. And we are accountable in this life before the next for every utterance that is issued from our mouth. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us in restraining our tongues and aid us in taming our language and give us the foresight to know the consequences of our words. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the victims of Srebrenica the station of the martyrs and grant their families patience and solace and peace and contentment with his will, his qadr. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على خير الأنام فإن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه ثم بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال جل من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعني بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزد لكم وأقم الصلاه